Hi there, it's Bill Peterson, aka The White Tornado, here for Geek Funk Labs, with number three in the series of Fluid Patcher lesson videos. This video introduces to you what is probably the most powerful and versatile feature of bank files, which is MIDI router rules. These rules allow you to control with pretty fine detail what every single control on your MIDI keyboard or controller does, individually for every single patch. Before we get into it, let me explain MIDI messages to you. If you're in this deep, you probably already know that MIDI controllers don't send audio signals or sound, they send MIDI messages. Each message has a type. Note messages are sent by the keys on your keyboard. Control changes are sent by the knobs or sliders or the modulation wheel or strip. Pitch bend messages are sent by the pitch bender. Most keyboards can send program change messages, and some can also send aftertouch, which is sent when you vary the pressure on a key while you're holding it down. If the controller can send a different value for each key, it's called key pressure, and if it's just one value for all the keys, it's called channel pressure or just aftertouch. MIDI messages also have one or two parameters. Pitch bend, aftertouch, and program change all just have one parameter, which is the value sent, the amount of pitch bend or pressure or the program to switch to. The other message types have a first parameter that is the number of the note that was played or the controller that was changed, and the second parameter is the value, so how hard the note was struck or the value the controller was moved to. There are other kinds of MIDI messages, but this covers the main types that are sent by MIDI controllers. All right, let me show you how router rules work by using them in a bank file. I'll start defining some patches. Now in some of the other lessons, we've created patches that had multiple sounds in them. But back when I had my old Casio MT240, it used to be able to layer sounds together. I remember a good go-to was to layer piano and strings together. So let me try to do that here. I'll add a piano preset to channel one. Now for the strings preset, I can't just put it on channel one because that'll just replace the piano. So I'll have to put it on a different channel, channel two. Now I'll just find a good sound. Now that I have both sounds, I can apply, and the patch shows up. But the problem is, if I play, I can only hear one sound. If I switch the keyboard to channel 2, I can hear the strings, but I can't hear both sounds at the same time. I can show this explicitly using another helpful tool in Fluid Patcher, which is this built-in MIDI monitor that shows the messages coming from my keyboard. So channel 2 triggers the violin, and channel 1 triggers the piano. You can also see the two parameters, the note number and value for each note message. The solution is to add a router rule. So let's go take a look at what those are and how they're formatted. I'll just go to the GitHub page for Fluid Patcher and into the bank section of the wiki. And here in the bank file, I can see some examples. Router rules is a list, so each rule gets a dash in front of it. And the rule can either be in curly braces like this or with each element of the rule on a separate line. If I scroll down to the keywords section, it explains how they work. A router rule is a set of criteria that define what kinds of incoming MIDI messages should be matched, and then if there is a match, what kind of message should be passed on to the synthesizer. Each router rule has to match a specific type of MIDI message, but it can also match specific channels or ranges of the first or second parameters. Router rules can also have other elements that we'll get into later. As you can see, the channel, par1, and par2 elements of a router rule can be defined in several different formats, which it's easiest just to show you by example. The way FluidSynth works is that it has default router rules that route each type of message on each channel to the same channel and message type in the synthesizer. This is why the note messages on channel 1 trigger the preset assigned to channel 1, and the channel 2 notes trigger the channel 2 preset. To get our layered effect, we just need to add a router rule to these default rules that also sends the notes from channel 1 to channel 2. So we'll add a router rules item to the patch and create a rule that catches notes on channel 1 and sends them to channel 2.
And now if we apply, we get our layered effect. All right, let's do another example. I want to create a patch that splits my keyboard so that the top half plays an electric piano and the bottom half plays a bass guitar. So I'll add the Rhodes piano. Now I'll find a good bass guitar. And that will sound better dropped a couple octaves. Now in order to be able to hear the Rhodes and the bass at the same time, just like the last patch, I'll add a router rule that sends incoming notes from channel 1 to channel 2. Now in this case though, I only want the keys say from this one on downward to go to the bass guitar. This is where the MIDI monitor can come in handy. If I hit that key, I can see that it's note number 58. So I just add a par 1 to specify which note numbers the rule should apply to, and we'll give a range of 0 up to 58. Now I also wanted to drop these notes down two octaves so they would sound more bassy. So to do that, I'll use this format for part one, where I specify a multiplier for the note numbers and a number to add to them. I'll just multiply them by one and subtract 24, which will drop them down by two octaves. Now there's another way you can specify notes. As a piano player, I know that this key on my keyboard is middle C or C4. So C is the name of the note and four is the octave. That means that this key here is B flat three. You can look up a table of MIDI note numbers on the internet and see that the note B flat in the third octave corresponds to note number 58. Fluid Patcher understands these note names, so if it was easier for me, I could just give this range as A0, the lowest piano key, up to B flat 3, and it would work the same way. Alright, let's test our rule. I'll apply, and select the patch, and play. That didn't work as expected. It seems like the notes are getting routed to the roads everywhere on the keyboard. So maybe we need to add a rule that routes notes to the roads just on the top half. So that would look like this. All right, it's still not working. So what's tripping us up is those default router rules. There's already a default rule that routes all the notes from channel 1 to channel 1 in the synth. The rule we just added didn't replace it, it just sends more notes. One way we can get around this is to add a rule before our rules that's just the word clear. This erases all the router rules up to that point, even the default ones. That's better, now it's doing what we want. So it's important to remember that those default router rules exist. Now this is up to you, but I actually try to avoid using clear because I find those default router rules to be kind of convenient. My preferred method is to put my presets on something other than channel 1, then I can just do my unusual note routing without having to use clear. Okay, that's enough Barney for now. Let's try routing a control change message. We can see from the MIDI monitor that this slider on the keyboard sends control change 7. If we look at this MIDI implementation chart, which you can also find linked down in the video description, we can see that a lot of control change messages have specific functions. And control change 7 is channel volume. Let's try that out on our piano strings patch. Okay, you can hear it's changing volume, but it's only affecting the piano. And that makes sense because the default router rules will only send channel 1 control changes to the channel 1 preset. We could just add another router rule to the patch, but it kind of makes sense for a volume slider to affect all the patches at the same time. To do this, we can add a router rule at the bank level, just like we did with fluid settings in the last lesson. So I'll route this control change from channel 1 to any of the other channels I think I might need. And for part 1, I'll set it to just control change number 7, so this rule only affects volume and not the other control changes. Let's test. Now we've got a working main volume. Okay, for the next trick, let's make some rules that affect parameter 2. You notice that when we were playing with volume on our piano strings patch, we could control the volume of each preset separately. Let's use that to create a patch where we can use a slider to change the amount of mixing between two different presets. 
I'll call this patch Pi Rodeo for reasons that will become clear. I'll just grab this piano from this patch and the roads from this one. Now I'll add a router rule that sends my controller's channel one notes to both of those presets at once. Now if I move this slider, I can see in the MIDI monitor that it's controller number 16. I'm going to make it so that when the slider's all the way up, you hear only piano. When it's in the middle, you hear both. And when it's at the bottom, you hear only the roads. So to do that, I'll route that controller to volume, but do it slightly differently for each channel. So first, I'll add a rule that routes a control change from channel 1 to channel 4, and it's controller 16 to channel 7, volume. And for part 2, I'll make the rule only apply to values 0 to 63, which is the middle value, and they will be changed to 0 to 127. This way, once the slider's past the middle, the piano will stay at max volume. For the other channel, I'll just change the rules so that it affects the top half of the slider and scales those values from minimum to maximum, but they're inverted, so when the slider's at the top, it changes the volume to zero. And it works! Ah, I can feel the spirit of my Roland XP-10 flowing through me. If you were paying attention earlier, you might have noticed that router rules can also have a type 2. This lets you change one type of MIDI message into a different type. It can get a little complicated if you change a one parameter MIDI message into a two parameter message or vice versa, but it's more or less explained here in this paragraph and you should just experiment. These two sliders on my keyboard apparently send control changes 17 and 18. I'm going to make them trigger some cool synth pads that I can swell in and out. So I'll call this patch Swell Pad. I'll use channel 6. Now let's go find a good pad. Okay, Cheesy Pad is speaking to me. Now I'll add a router rule that accepts control changes but produces note messages. The slider sends on channel 1 but I want the notes on channel 6. For part 1, the controller number is 17, and I want to send to a specific note number. I think I'll do a nice C fifth, and the monitor tells me that C is note number 60. Now we do the same thing for the other slider, but it's controller number 18 and note number 67. We don't need a part 2 for these rules, the value of the slider will just map directly to the velocity of the note. Let's apply and test it out. Yeah. I've seen things you people wouldn't believe. <clears throat> so, router rules can also be used to control things other than MIDI messages. In the last lesson, you saw how to use fluid settings to change the parameters of the reverb and chorus units. With router rules, you can use the controls on your keyboard to change fluid settings in real time. This slider that I haven't used yet sends control change 15. I'll add a rule that selects control change 15 on channel 1. Now I'll add a fluid setting parameter with the name of the fluid setting as its value. And I think I want this to change the synth reverb room size parameter. Parameter 2 of the rule will describe how the value of the controller affects the fluid setting. I'll use the full range of the controller, 0 to 127. And if I look at the fluid settings page, I see that room size can go from 0 to 1. So that'll be the output range. In this lesson, you've seen how router rules work and a few examples of what they can do. Jump in and experiment on your own to see what you can come up with. More Fluid Patcher lessons are coming soon, so stay tuned and stay funky. <laughs>